Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church, Brantford. Thank you to those who are participating in our service. Nancy Mullins, our Minister of Music, Phil Fraser, our reader, Kathy and Phil Fraser, and Phil Thorne, our trio, accompanied by Brenda Thorne, and Mark Eisner, assisting us with streaming. Our scriptures tell the story of the risen Christ's ascension to heaven. The ascension marks the transfer of responsibility from Jesus himself to his followers. It was a commissioning event. The mission? To take the good news of Jesus to the very ends of the earth. And we claim it as our mission today. The hymn Hail the day that sees him rise. scripture this morning is taken from 2nd Kings chapter 2 verses 1 to 14 when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal Elijah said to Elisha stay here the Lord has sent me to, to Bethel and Elisha said as surely as the Lord lives and as you live I will not leave you so they went down to Bethel the company of the prophets of Bethel came out to Elisha and said, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets of Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? 
Yes, I know, he said. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them then walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took off his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I have taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's coat and was, had, that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. Then he struck the water and it divided to the right and to the left and he crossed over. This is the word of the Lord. And reading also from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, 44 to 53. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led the disciples out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven, and a cloud took them out of their sight. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Thanks be to God for this reading. According to the Christian calendar, today is Ascension Sunday, the day when the church recalls that the risen Christ ascended to heaven. There are only two descriptions of the Ascension in the scriptures, and both were written by Luke. The Ascension is the last thing that Luke describes in his Gospel, and the first thing he describes in his Volume 2, Acts of the Apostles. To the early Church, the Ascension was the transfer of responsibility from Jesus to his followers. It was a commissioning event. Jesus' mission including the power with which he did it, is now transferred to the disciples. Let's begin by looking at another ascension, the ascension of Elijah. The prophet lived about 900 years before Jesus. In Hebrew tradition, Elijah stands alongside Moses as the preeminent theological figure. He is regarded not only as a dominant figure from the past, 
but also a carrier of Israel's life and faith into the future. Today's text recounts the story of the transition of power from Elijah to his chosen successor, Elisha. Elijah begins by taking Elisha around the country to tour all the shrines. It was a sort of farewell tour for Elijah. At each stopping place, Elijah says to Elisha, stay here. And in every instance, the younger prophet vows not to leave him. The request seemed to be Elijah's way of testing his successor's stamina and devotion. Their effect is to underscore both Elisha's persistence and his unqualified loyalty to his master. They come at last to the River Jordan. There, Elijah waves his mantle over the waters. A mantle is an overcloak or cloak that is placed on one's shoulders. In the ancient world, the mantle of a holy person was believed to be endowed with supernatural power. The waters parted and the two went across. Elisha says to Elijah, let me inherit your spirit so that I can do what you have done. In response, Elijah places one requirement upon Elisha. He must witness, actually see the departure of his master. Then according to the narrative, Elijah ascends to heaven in a whirlwind, riding on a chariot of fire. Elisha witnesses the event, and as he watches, Elijah's mantle falls to the ground. Elisha picks it up, and he goes back to the Jordan. With the mantle, he parts the waters and walks across. The act confirms that Elijah's spirit is now on Elisha. Henceforth, Elisha not only has the mission of Elijah, but he also has Elijah's power. The story of the ascension of Jesus sounds very much like Elijah being lifted up to heaven, and it is supposed to. Luke wants us to see that being a Christian means that we are to take up Christ's mantle. In the last scene of Elijah's life, he ascends to heaven. In the last scene of Jesus' life, he ascends to heaven. Elijah's mantle falls to the ground. Elisha picks it up. Jesus says, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Stay in the city until you are clothed, like with a mantle with power from on high. Ten days later, on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came upon the disciples like a mantle and empowered them to be servants of Christ. As we read through the story of the apostles in Acts, that is exactly what they did. They acted with the same authority that had characterized the work of Jesus. The disciples moved into the world doing his ministry. They preached the reign of God, healed the sick, and formed a new community called the church. The followers of Jesus assumed the mantle of Christ's mission and his power. And in the very act of witnessing, they became the channel of God's power and grace in the world. The mission was given to all the believers, not just a select few. Luke writes, go out into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. 
To be a Christian is to be a proclaimer and an evangelizer. There is a difference between preaching and proclaiming. Someone has said, we preach with words, but we proclaim with our lives. All of us are commissioned to live and proclaim the gospel of life and love and hope and peace by the witness of our lives. No one watching the disciples that day could have imagined what an astonishing thing would happen in the days and the years to come. Those 11 people became the church. The followers became leaders. The listeners became preachers. The converts became missionaries. The healers, the healed, became healers. The disciples became apostles, witnesses of the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And nothing was ever the same again. And when we live in that spirit, surprising things happen. We are empowered to become the hands and feet, the body of Christ in our world today. With the mantle of the risen Christ, let us bring good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. On this day of hope, encouragement, and commissioning, let us renew our commitment to be true disciples wherever we might be. Thanks be to God. Amen.
us pray. Loving God, we gather this day in the joy of fellowship with you. We sense your presence with us. Teach us in whatever circumstance we find ourselves that you remain with us, loving, protecting, challenging, nurturing. You call us to be your presence, your body in this world. Though we are very different people with many different talents and gifts, we are one in your spirit that we may be your ministers in the world. Help us to be all that we can be in serving you by serving others. Your love is unconditional. Let ours be so as well. Show us again the way to life in all abundance. We ask that your gifts of healing, faith, hope, and love would be with the people and situations we name before you now. We remember all affected by COVID-19 for all essential services. We pray for the vulnerable and fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, the isolated and housebound. We pray for those whose livelihoods are in peril, for those without employment, those who are fearful of what lies ahead. We pray for your healing presence in the lives of those who are ill from other causes, for those struggling to recover and return to health. We remember all who are feeling the ache of loss and bereavement. May they know your healing strength and peace and know that neither life nor death can separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus. We pray for our homes and for family and friends near and far. We pray for the nations of the world, that the hearts of all people will turn from the ways of destruction and war and may instead be filled with the compassion to create and to build, to make fair and beautiful. Merciful God, Help us to be ministers of mercy and ambassadors of truth as we bring good news to our world in Jesus' name. And who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All hail the power of Jesus' name.
witness to the Christ who has ascended to be everywhere present. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Welcome to First Baptist Brantford Sunday School. My name is David. Together through prayer, story, and scripture, we'll learn of God's love and word for us today. Let's begin by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The story I'm going to tell, us, tell you today is something simple can remind us of God. There's lots of versions to this story. I've read three or four of them. And I'm going to tell you the one I like the best. During the First World War, a young soldier who was a Christian read his Bible every minute he could. And during one battle, he lost his Bible and he couldn't replace it. A fellow soldier, also a Christian, gave the soldier a deck of cards and told him 
that the cards could help this young soldier remind him of the passages in the Bible and that God's love is there for him. And this is what the soldiers said that deck of cards represented. First of all, the ace testifies there's only one God. Joel chapter 2 verse 27 reads, You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I the Lord am your God and there is none other. The two tells us that the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Bible is God's word to us, and God's word does God's work. The three reminds us of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the four represents the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The five reminds us of the five wise and the five foolish versions, or bridesmaids. They are waiting for the bridegroom to arrive, but he took so long they fell asleep and their lamps went out. The five wise virgins had brought extra oil with them to light their lamps. The five foolish had to go and buy more. By the time they returned, the doors were locked, everybody was inside, and the five foolish virgins were not able to get in. Matthew chapter 25 talks to us about the five versions. And Matthew um, thir verse 13 says, For you know neither the day nor the hour. Be ready all the time. Be prepared always when Christ returns. The five also reminds us of the feeding of the 5,000 men as well as the women and the children and the boy who had five barley loaves and two small fishes. John verse, or chapter 6 reads, Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, and so also the fish, as much as they wanted. <clears throat> and when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and twelve filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign which they had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. And remember, Jesus can perform miracles using small things and young people, including all of us. <clears throat> the number six reminds us of the creation. Genesis chapter one reminds us that God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and it was good. The number seven is God's special number. It's called a prime number, which means it can only be divided by itself and the number one. There are seven days in a week. God worked for six on the, on the seventh day he rested. Genesis 2, chapter, verses 2 and 3 says, And on the seventh day God finished his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from the work which he had done in creation. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 21 says, Six days you shall work, but on the seventh you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvest time you shall rest. Let us remember the seventh day, the seventh day, to keep it holy and rest. Now eight is a number not everyone would recognize as having something significant in the Bible. But King David was the eighth son. There are eight steps going into the church and on the eighth day after the birth, all males were taken to the temple. The number eight is also the number that represents righteousness. Genesis chapter seven, verse one reads, Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives went with him into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. When God destroyed the earth, only eight people were left, and those were the eight righteous people. The number nine reminds us that Jesus healed 10 lepers. They were unclean and isolated from everyone. Jesus healed them, but nine ran away. They went to the priests to report. Nine never said thank you to Jesus. Luke 17, verses 17 to 19 reads, Then Jesus said, Were there not 10 cleansed? Where's the nine? One, was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. 
Remember, in little as well as in big things, we're to turn to God and to thank him. Ten is an easy number to remember, the Ten Commandments. But just remember, these are Ten Commandments, not Ten Suggestions. Then there's the Jack. He's often called the Jack of Knaves, the Devil. In Ezekiel chapter 28, God's speaking to the Devil. In verse 2, he says, You have said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of the gods. Yet you are but a man and no God, though you consider yourself as wise as a God. And then if we further read in that same chapter, you were, the, you were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. You were blameless in your ways from the way you were created till iniquity was found in you and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God. The devil feels he's God. He's out to destroy, destroy God's creation. His desire is to steal, kill, and destroy all of us and all who love and believe in God and in Christ. He was originally one of God's first angels, but he wanted to be equal to God and was kicked out of heaven, and now is the joker of eternal hell. You know, let's do all we can to defeat the devil, and the best ways to read the Bible by praying and following the teachings of God and of Jesus. The Queen speaks of the great women of the Bible, everyone from Eve, the mother of all humanity, to the women in Luke chapter 23, who came from um, Galilee and followed Jesus uh, when he was crucified and placed in the tomb. They returned and prepared his body for spices and ointments. And again, on the Sabbath day, they rested according to the commandment. And of course, there's Mary, the mother of Jesus. All the women who loved God and followed Jesus are queens. Finally, there's the king. Jesus is our king. Jesus is the name, Jesus is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, and he'll reign forever. He's a compassionate king, forgiving king, a loving king, who wants to invite us into his house, but we have to ask him in. Revelation chapter three says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Finally, the fellow soldier said, that although he had lost his Bible, when he pulled out a deck of cards, he remembered what he had learned over the years in church and is reminded that God loves us and we should remember to thank God for all that we have. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we have so many things to be thankful for. We're thankful for the stories of the Bible and for people in it. They teach us so many things that we should do and show us the love and understanding and compassion that you and your son have shown to us. Help us to be like the wise virgins who prepared for the return of the bridegroom, and like the one leper who came back to thank Jesus for healing him. As we read the Bible, help us to understand it and to follow the teachings in it. Help us to open the door of our hearts when you knock on it, so you may come in. Be with us in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, wherever you go, remember God is there. And whatever you do, you are not alone. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now.